Good morning. So let's see if this is going to work. Um, I'm just going to pause whilst Facebook. Yes, okay. Good morning <laughs> once again. Good morning. And um, lovely to see all of you if you're going to watch it. Excellent. So today we are going to work with plants and the first one we are working with um, is, is for today first in, in this week is is the orchid so I have um, just three of my orchids which are in bloom at the moment and this one is has been in the bathroom for, for years and it's a real it's a real mama it's got lovely 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 pretty little blossoms and um, it's it's got some really beautiful beautiful plump leaves and it's been in this for, for a long time I have to be very careful that I don't overwater it because otherwise you the, the, the roots are will rot um, if there's too much water so they shouldn't really be in, in standing water so but because this has been next to the shower it's picked up quite a lot of line scale from that but it's been constantly misted it's been constantly misted with um let's see i'm just going to increase the so i can see what's happening on facebook okay so maybe you can't see it quite so well there we are it's been con constantly misted um by by the shower from the spray from the shower so this is a is a real mama because it's produced um it's produced three little three little babies which are quite a good size and one of which is producing its own flowers exactly like that exactly the same size um, and I think this is a palynopsis as you can tell from from the leaves that, that sort of shape so I'm gonna just pop you here for the moment um, just about on Facebook you can just about see the leaves on the video my phone you can see some of the flowers um, this is the second one and this one's in another palynopsis I find that for me <laughs> um, I sometimes forget to water them this this period is not the best time to forget to water them because it gets quite dry um, the palynopsis um, they also remind me of home mm, for some reason I think these ones um, are, are very very common in Kuala Lumpur and in Malaysia so I find them the easiest to, to to take care of and I'm very lucky because there's always a couple I've got quite a few orchid plants and there are always at least a couple which are flowering um, even through the cold and so I've always got live flowers in the house and um, yeah I must have at least 20 of 20 orchids of varying sizes there's some tiny ones so I'm not doing too well on the windowsill there um, and there are other ones some which I'm taking care of um, for my sister and this is the final one it's slightly different it's a palynopsis but it's flowers kind of droop a little bit more yeah, so they, they kind of cascade quite they cascade Whereas the other ones, they're just um, like this one. It's just, it's just, they're just there. I don't really like to prop the flowers up. I quite like to leave them in their natural state, even if it means they go quite, quite, quite wild. And uh, I have to space them a little bit apart because they, 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 will, they will overlap with each other. So this is the one which produces a, a very very slight aroma in the evening in my room because it's west facing in my bedroom and um, and when it gets the full sun it, it seems to give a very 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 slight aroma so when I come in the room I can really smell as something something different is quite sweet but it's very very slight so here we are so you can um let's see i'm just going to bring you in so that people can see you and it's just because of the way the flowers are um <laughs> just wondering how i'm going to do this 
perhaps when you do the meditation or if you're gonna do it now um, with me at this moment in time I can't tell if people are, are joining with this new Facebook system um, previously I could see but anyway if you want to perhaps it would be best if you had a if you had a plant next to you yep an orchid plant next to you and then you will gain from actually having something here which you can look at and then you can imagine yourself asking for permission of course if it's okay to connect with them and then you can imagine yourself just merging with them and I just realized that these plants are very interesting because why don't I shift this down a little bit it might be able to see the plants a little bit better yeah okay good so at least you get to see these plants hmm. Uh, that's, it's just oh, it's okay it's okay it's just someone who's put a leaflet through and that's cool. excuse please excuse the disruption he's so cute it's okay sweetie it's all right it's just someone putting something through the letterbox it's all right it's okay good boy hmm? okay so it's a good idea to have the plant next to you. It just makes it a lot easier to connect with. But these plants are a little bit different because even though the um, the roots are in in uh, sphagnum moss or they're in lots of bark, um, a lot of them come up air roots. Yeah. So with this plant, some of it. When it's in the wild in Malaysia, they tend to be on the branches of quite large trees. And so their roots are exposed to air and they're exposed to light. I mean, in the jungle, as I have seen live ones before, and you're not supposed to touch them, which is a good thing. Um, it's, it's really, really dark. It's like being in, in the woods uh, at the height of summer when everything is bloom blooming and the, the leaves everywhere leaves in the trees and stuff um, but but in the jungle it's it's like that 365 days a year um, and so they do catch they may not get direct sunlight which is probably a good thing because it might burn them though they're happy here on the windowsill because they only get the sun you know such strong sunlight in in summer um, but um, so when we connect and we connect with their roots it's going to be quite different to say connecting with a an oxalis or um, or a geranium plant or another shrub because their roots don't don't really catch any sunlight they don't catch the air but with the orchid it's it's very particular to this plant and uh, and is it an epic and to, to other plants um, which 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 work in a, a similar way so okay so I'm just uh, admiring them <laughs> looking to see whether they need a bit more water this one's very damp because I watered them a couple of days ago so I have to keep an eye on making sure that they're not too damp because then they rot <laughs> not a good thing especially in this climate so um, so yes this this experience might be very 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 slightly different but um, but they're still connecting to, to soil. Yeah. And they've still been they've still been born of, of earth. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now is um just take a few deep breaths. If you want to keep your eyes open, that's absolutely fine. But if you'd like to close them, that's it's also absolutely fine as well. If you'd like to spend some moments when we're directly connecting with them with the orchids um, you may want to open your eyes to look at them if that helps with your connection or you can have them in your lap or you can have them just like I have here just right right next to right next to me in front of me okay so just take a few deep breaths and slow your breath down
so and the intention is just to connect with all the sensations that your physical body is giving to you so what we're doing is we're working on making this connection whilst we're very present in the body yeah which is why we're breathing slowing it down appreciating every breath that we take because it's bringing in more and more oxygen to all our cells how wonderful all this oxygen all this air is free and we really need to ensure that the quality is always good for all of us not just for humans but for us and the plants as well So you can feel your bum on the seat and like I've said previously with previous meditations to support your back so it's nice and straight <laughs> and if at any time you need to, to make um, if you need to sway or you need to move um, sometimes I find myself I won't be doing it here I sometimes find myself um, when I'm listening to someone's meditation I found that I have to make some sounds because it helps me to um, it helps the toxins or it helps the energy to move in that part of the body so if you feel called to sing or um, just make a sound or, or, or ah, give a good sigh out or yawn or don't worry if you burp or fart that happens a lot because it means that things are shifting and you're moving things are moving on out of your body which is a very good sign okay so just keep feeling all the sensations that your body is giving to you through the senses if you touch you can hear my voice and perhaps if you have your eyes open you may want to gaze at your flowers or you can gaze at the flowers on the screen you may have a flavor, a taste of breakfast or something which you remember in your mouth and you may smell an aroma <clears throat> I think my hay fever has come a bit early this year so with every breath that you take you're sinking deeper and deeper into your heart center so just let whatever thoughts, just let them arise, don't fight them, perhaps they've come up for a reason, for this time. And you may want to pluck the consciousness from the mind and place into the heart, into the middle of the chest. So all the work that we do here is for the highest good of all sentient beings across all space, time, dimensions, universes and it's done with love with joy with appreciation and gratitude and with calmness and peace and unity as well So first we're going to flood ourselves with gold light. So you can imagine yourself surrounded by gold. Perhaps you're sitting in a sphere or a ball of gold light. And if you see any other colors or you feel like you need to surround yourself with any other colors then go ahead perceive or visualize those colors around you And on the next in-breath, 
I'd like you to visualize and imagine or know that all this light is coming into your body through your crown, through the top of your head. So as you breathe in, you're flooding your brain, the center of your brain, the pineal gland, with all that beautiful light and it's like liquid. It's like liquid, liquid gold, liquid rainbow, liquid silver, liquid pink, green, yellow, and it's filling your pineal gland completely and it's rejuvenating it if it needs it, it's giving them it a big boost of energy, helping it to do whatever it needs to do, do its work and its best, most perfect capacity. And it's also, this light is also going to the pituitary gland, which is just behind your third eye. And all this gold is also flooding the brain, into the brain stem, into the frontal lobe and the, the, the hemispheres, both sides. And it's beginning to flood down into the eyes sockets, into the structure, your skeletal structure, into your skull, into the bones and the marrow, down into the nasal cavity, sinuses, cheekbones, into the jaws and into the teeth, the joints, the tongue, the mouth, the occipital region, the connection between the skull and the spinal cord into all the nerves and the light is spilling down into, shh, it's okay, it's just a delivery, oh, okay, okay. Don't worry about the noises, they just serve to help us focus a bit more. Okay, so all this light has filled your entire head. And it's flooding down the nervous system in your spine, going through all the nerve endings into all parts of your body. And it's also coming down and merging with the skeletal structure, which was with your spinal cord as well. And as it's doing this, it's running down your throat into the thyroid glands, the throat, the esophagus as well, larynx, throat chakra. Oh. Okay. Good. I was hoping that we don't have to. <laughs> Pause this. Ah, so, so into your throat, down your shoulders, into the bones, into the shoulder blades. Ah, it's in the back, into the thymus gland to the lungs, into the heart, to the ribs, the sternum. So again, your skeletal structure, into the arms, into the fingers, and through all the blood, the lymphatic system, the glandular system, all the nodes, the lymph nodes, all the muscles. So this golden light and other colors which you may have chosen, they're all merging and suffusing every part of you. But as, as it comes down, it's also spilling into the other parts, into all your, your subtle bodies as well. The energy bodies beyond your physical body. Okay, so it's, it's 
leaking through your physical body into all the energy bodies. And it's merging with that too. And this gold light is not just source, it is also you, your spirit. So if you, if you want to really set the intention to bring your light in as well, then on the next breath, bring it through your crown and it's following the path of the gold light and it's made easier by the gold light entering into your body as it helps to raise your vibration and it helps to move all the toxins and the old stuff which is limiting or which is taking up the space all the old thoughts um, passed on to us by family ancestors by teachers which don't serve us anymore so in the next few breaths you're bringing in your own spirit your own pure soul light so this is a slightly different way of doing it but it's good to remember that this body is for your spirit to inhabit and to create in this plane it's spirit, your spirit, and of course, source, because we are connected to source, whether we believe it or not. And we're having this experience in this body. <clears throat> and we're creating in 3D and beyond, because everything gets affected, of course. One else is affected too. We are not an island. So your spirit is filling your brain, your eyes, your ears, your skull, all parts of the brain. Hi, hi Tracy and hi Lara just pops up occasionally I can't really tell who's joined or not or made comments but thank you for, for joining in oops lots of burps so <clears throat> bringing in your spirit into the whole of your head your brain pineal gland pituitary gland so it follows the route that all the gold light through and then down your throat down your arms into the lungs into the bones to the sternum rib cage into the heart heart chakra as well and now we're moving together gold light of source and the light of your spirit moving together one they are one anyway so they're going down through the diaphragm or into the stomach into the liver spleen and pancreas so this is the solar plexus the chakra as well and to the small intestines into the kidneys and adrenal glands and it's already come down the spine and through all the nerves and the nerves and all through the body and it's also suffusing the lymphatic system and the blood as well through all the arteries and the veins and the spaces between the organs and the spaces in the cells all the cells so it's entering merging with all of this Bringing more light to your cells. Hi, hi Tracy. Yeah, it's bringing more light to all of your cells. 
helping yourselves to release vibrations which do not serve us, helping the cells of the body and all the organs, all the places in between the organs, all the muscles, all the nerves, all the limbs, the bone and the bone marrow, all the bits which I have not mentioned but need to be lit up as well. So we're going down into the sexual organs, into the lower belly, into the large intestines, into the bones of the hips, the pelvis, the sit bones, and now into the root chakra, into the perineum and the tailbone, and into the hips, through the bones, the thighs, the muscles, the tendons, or the joints the knees, the shins, the calves, down to the ankles and into the feet. So you may want to imagine yourself just completely filled with light, filled with source light, filled with your pure spirit, pure soul light. And what this is doing is just dislodging old stuff which doesn't serve you anymore. So that your cells can vibrate at the rate which best serves you now so that you can ground your spirit more but we're not going to stop at the feet this energy this light which is you is going to go down into your earth star chakra fill it this is our connection with earth and we're going to go down further on and further through all the layers of earth, the physical and energetic layers of earth. Down. And it's up to you whether you want to connect to the solid core of the planet or whether you want to connect to the, the star core, the starlight core of the planet. But whichever it is, Mother Earth receives us with open arms, full of love. Full of love. Full of joy. Receive her message, which could be, I've always loved you. You've lived as part of me all this time. You may have forgotten, but I'm always reminding you by helping you to see the beauty which is in nature. But also understanding that nature has its cycles too. And sometimes there's a time for rest. Sometimes there's a time for germination. Sometimes there's a time for action, for producing something. I've always loved you. You've always been a part of me and you've never ever been alone. So feel her love. Feel her love. And feel it in your body as well, not just in your consciousness but in your body too you may feel warmth and a tingle but she also offers her energy as it comes up and spirals up the light that we sent down and anchored in her core whether it's a solid or it's the light core whichever you prefer whichever you choose at this time perhaps you choose both that's fine but it spirals up and whatever color it needs to be for you at this moment, perhaps it's white, perhaps it's brown like soil, but it's rich, rich with love. And it spirals up, connects with the earth star, fills it and then comes up through our feet 
comes up the legs, through the knees, and the thighs, and the butt, the hips, the pelvis. Comes into the spine through the tail and goes into all the nerves. This is coming up the perineum as well and into the bladder, into the sexual organs. And so it's root and sacral and into the large intestines and it's coming up and it's rising, filling each and every cell with this light, with this love. With this acceptance and she's not like our human parents she doesn't punish okay our ideas of punishment come from humans not from nature okay so if you need to let that go is let it go nature does not punish anything or anyone Sometimes things don't work because we're out of alignment with its natural cycle. So, let it rise into the kidneys. It's entering the small intestines and entering the liver and entering the spleen, the pancreas, gallbladder small intestines and up so solar plexus and then the stomach and it's coming up the lungs and into the heart so the heart chakra high heart thymus gland and up through the whole skeleton into the blood bone marrow breathe in and then let go breathe in again let go let just let go of anything which doesn't serve you and perhaps from what I said punishment doesn't come from nature <laughs> something that we've learned from each other and from parents or teachers or friends or whatever let go comes into the heart lungs up into the throat, thyroids, esophagus, up into the head, all parts of the head, it's up the spinal cord, meets the occipital region, the connection between skull and spinal cord, and all the nerves there, into the brain, pineal, pituitary, third eye, into the eyes, ears, jaws, teeth, nose, front both hemispheres and it continues its journey beyond into space so if you need to just wiggle your butt I do this always does something to my hips <laughs> so if you need to stretch or wriggle that's fine or you need to sway so yes Meditation is taking some time. But anyway, our, our soul light, our pure spirit light, has suffused every single one of our cells. And we've also got the Great Mother, her energy. And we also brought in Source to help raise our vibration, to help to just transform us so that it's easier for our soul light to come in and to really ground and to really be embodied here. So just have a moment where every cell is just filled with your light. And on the next few out breath, we're just releasing what we don't need, any toxins as well. And they're going to wherever they need to go, or they're being transmuted into gold light. And if there's pressure anywhere, it's because things are starting to move. They're moving out. So just blow into them. I tend to get mine in my third eye. 
with just a few deep breaths out. <sighs> and make sure you drink plenty of water. Plenty of water. It will help the toxins to move out. Don't go yet, Tracy. We're doing, we're working with the orchids as well. <laughs> we just haven't started yet. We've just been working with ourselves first so that we're prepared to work with these creatures. And to me, they're ascended ones, really. <clears throat> there is no res resistance to what they are and who they are and what they do. <laughs> There's a difference between plants, animals, and humans, right? We have a lot of resistance. They don't. They just do whatever they've come here to do. Grow. Reproduce. Create babies. Yeah, it's not for all of us. I'm not saying that every woman or every man has to have babies and kids and families. No, but... For the plants, this is what they do. This is what they do all the time. It's completely normal and natural. <clears throat> there is no resistance to that. So for, for me, they're, they're of an incredibly high consciousness. Perfect. In every way. Even those which are classified as weeds. Perfect in every way. Hello, squirrel. Looking for nuts. Perfect in every way. So take a moment and look at your beautiful orchids so you can have a look at these ones. And we just ask if it's okay to connect with you so that we can learn how to be more in alignment with nature. <coughs> So that we remember our connection with nature. So that we connect with the natural rhythms of nature. And for me, the answer is yes. So you do this from your heart. And for me, what I do is I connect with my heart. And I just feel as much love as I can for, for this beautiful plant. And as I look at it, and I can see, I can see its roots as well, because they're air roots, yeah. And some in the soil, some in the moss. But I imagine myself becoming one with this. So I connect my heart with this plant. And I find it easier to close my eyes and just open my ears and listen. And perhaps it's opening your spirit ears as well. Or not just your physical ears, but your spirit ears. Capacity to hear beyond what the physical can hear. It's what the spirit hears. And just allow whatever comes through to come through. And tomorrow we will connect with a plant whose roots are un unseen and deep in the soil. And then you may find that the experience is a little bit different. Because this plant lives mainly of light. And whatever it takes from the waters. And also what gathers from the branches of the trees. The humus from the leaves. Just connect with it through your heart.
honor it for allowing you to connect with it and it's doing something to the back of my heart chakra I feel like as if there are some roots <laughs> some roots growing from my back or tendrils growing from my back And the connection in the back is from for me as well. Besides, um, you know, the wings which connect us to to light. There's also connection to to ancestors, spirit, spirit guides. So go with whatever experience you're having. And you may want to journal it. And with each in-breath, you're just connecting a little bit deeper with this beautiful plant or the plant that you've chosen, your orchid plant. It could be a picture. And and close your eyes each time it's fine and even though we don't have chlorophyll getting a bit of sunlight and fresh air is very very good for us how many times have you found yourself inspired by nature, by being out amongst the trees and the plants? I feel like it's helping me to increase the roots and my connection with earth and I feel mm, yeah it's 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 like I'm growing roots out of my feet it's showing me how to do that settling them deep into the earth I'm more connected to the natural rhythms. I'm more sensitive to to the environment. And it's also showing me how to open my crown chakra. So that I can receive more of my light, more of spirit. I'm just trying to feel if I can connect to its rhythm, to its heartbeat. So you can always create a connection just by sitting with your plant and just being quiet, connecting through your heart, just asking if it's okay and then perhaps 
imagine that you're merging with it through your heart, through love, and just opening up your spirit ears and also all your other senses because the senses that we have, the physical senses, there we also have multi-dimensional senses and that's what helps us to hear spirit and hear our own wisdom as well. See you, Tracy. Okay, so you might want to withdraw. So withdraw yourself back into your heart. Thank your chosen orchid. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. You're so beautiful and I love you so much. Thank you. So what I'm getting from this as well is that there's, there's, there is movement even when it's still because it's drawing sap, yeah, it's drawing water, and whatever it needs through through its roots, and then there's subtle. It's of course it's sending everything to to the flowers as well. There's subtle sort of movements and shifts in the flowers themselves. And the work, of course, with the feet, with the roots, and up with the crown. So, I'd like you to just take a few deep breaths and feel your feet on the ground. Feel your feet on the ground. And as you breathe in, you just feel the sensations that your physical body are giving you. And I hope that you've connected to your physical body, um, especially whilst we've been doing this, so that you can feel whatever changes and whatever shifts you might have had, um, so that they're real. Okay, they really, really are sensed. I'm just going to move you over here so I can get my mask. Okay. So, you can open your eyes, or oh, if you've had your eyes open, wonderful. So thank you very much, this has been quite a long meditation. Um, you can work on it, you can look, watch it again whenever you want, and I hope it's helpful for you. Um, tomorrow we'll be working with a different plant, and I haven't decided yet which one it will be. But it's it's uh, not going to be an orchid because we'll use one whose roots are, are really deeply immersed in soil, and which aren't air roots like um, like these lovely 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 orchids. So make sure you take a few deep breaths and jump up and down three times if you are able to sing your name out loud. <sighs> but feel your body, yeah. We've hopefully we've brought more light into each and every one of yourselves and brought your energy into that so that you can ground and embody spirit your spirit here. Of course, the point is to create heaven on earth. So thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, today is Tuesday, tomorrow will be Wednesday for another connection with the plants. And, and do do write comments and I kind of know that you're there um, and um, thanks again and thanks for your patience as well with all the distractions and the dog and the squirrels and stuff like that okay but enjoy your day and hopefully we meet again soon bye for now